looked to him like a paradise. It was it was as beautiful land as you could imagine. It was a uh, shangri up here. As soon as they hit that little hill at the rise, they saw Overlook beckoning to them, and what a lovely sight it was, and what an inspiration. What artist wouldn't be inspired by that view? The story begins, as it always does in Woodstock, with the mountain. Mysterious, beckoning, powerful. Bolton Brown, an emissary of the Whiteheads, spent months wandering through the backwoods of the Catskills, until one day, emerging over a mountain crest, he took one look, a view of a hundred miles, and said, this is the place. This is the place, I can feel it. For a brief period of time, everything went well at Birdcliff, and Birdcliff artists created some of the most dynamic and useful pieces of art of the beginning of the century. But it wouldn't last. It couldn't last. Birdcliff art, with its emphasis on human design, couldn't compete with the new reality of mass production. And it took a toll on Ralph and Jane Whitehead, whose dream in jeopardy began to drift apart. Jane ran Birdcliff with strict, high standards, and artists were expected to present their work once a week, like children in a boarding school. But artists never respond to authority. And the more control Ralph tried to exert, the more the artists started simply disappearing. 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 Jane did the same, albeit in a different way, retreating more and more into her own mind. When the Whitehead's son died unexpectedly at a young age, it pretty much spelled the end of Birdcliff as it once existed. Ralph died a month later, his experiment in life nothing more than a beautiful failure. But others would come and add unexpected new chapters. 